Hello there, my name's Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, we're waiting for the new uh, Galaxy phones to be announced, the S9, very, very soon. And of course, in previous years, the phones have had two types of processors in them. Some of them had Qualcomm Snapdragon processors in, and some had processors from uh, Samsung, the Exynos range. And true to form, Samsung have just announced a new processor, the Exynos 9810. I keep wanting to say Exynos 8910, but it's the 9810. And so in today's video, we're gonna look at what is the Exynos 9810. And so if you want to know, please let me explain. So the first thing to note is that the new Exynos 9810 is in direct competition with the uh, Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon 845. Now it is a octa-core processor, it's a 64-bit octa-core processor, and the four power efficiency cores are the, based on the Cortex-A55 design, and that's exactly the same as the Snapdragon 845. But when it comes to the four high-performance cores, we have here some significant differences. Qualcomm have gone with the uh, Cryo, which is based on the Cortex-A75, whereas Samsung are now at their third generation of custom CPU design. So the previous Exynos chips had the M1 and then the M2 and now we are at the M3. Now the key thing about the M3 first of all is it's clocked at 2.9 gigahertz, that's its maximum uh, clock frequency. But more astoundingly, Samsung are claiming it has double the single thread performance than the M2. Now that's quite a, a, an amazing statement by Samsung and we really are looking forward to seeing this chip in some devices so we can check that out. But if it's true, it means that the uh, Exynos 9810 has got performance parameters similar to, close to, not yet beating, but very similar to, very close to the Apple A11 Bionic. Now, according to my calculations, if what Samsung are saying is true, we should be seeing Geekbench scores for single-threaded uh, operations of around 3,900 and multi-core scores of up over 9,000. As I say, those are a huge leap compared to what we had in the last generation. And moving on from the CPU, we go to the GPU, and this has got the latest ARM Mali GPU unit, that's the G72. Now, the previous Exynos chip had a 20-core uh, GPU unit. This one has now got an 18-core GPU unit, but yet it actually has a 20% greater performance than the previous generation. And that's because the G72 is a, a greater performing processor than the uh, G71, a graphics processor, and they've gone from 20 core down to 18, but still managed to bump up that GPU performance. So again, that will be really interesting to see when we have this in real chips. Other things to notice are that it's built using a 10 nanometer uh, fabrication process and it also uses low power DDR4 RAM. Now when it comes to multimedia, the new Exynos chip can do 4K at 120 frames per second, both recording and uh, a playback. And also it supports H.265, H.264 and uh, the VP9 codecs. Now when it's using H.265, it can also record using 10-bit color, which of course is very important for HDR setups. A couple of other things to mention, it can support dual cameras on the back up to 16 megapixels or a 24 megapixel single camera on the back. It also supports things like Bluetooth 5, it's got advanced uh, image stabilization built into the chip itself and of course it's got the latest and greatest LTE modem which is a 1.2 gigabits per second LTE modem if of course your carrier supports such a thing. So how does it compare to the Snapdragon 845? Well, for example, it's got greater features like it's got the 120 frames per second recording in 4K. Now the Qualcomm does not have that. Now last year, Samsung disabled that feature in the Exynos variant of their phones. So there was parity across uh, all of its devices. Now that will, might probably happen again this year because the Qualcomm doesn't support 120 frames per second in 4K. But the bigger problem for Samsung is this performance. If the performance is as great as they are claiming, then there's gonna be quite a performance difference between the Qualcomm version of the handset and the Exynos versions of the handsets. Now, Samsung have got two ways to play this. One is just to say, well, that's it. That's the variant you get in your region because of modems, because of you know uh, the regulations, because of marketing, that's the variation you get and that's the speed you have to deal with. Or they could peg down the performance of the Exynos version so that it's not so much greater than the Snapdragon 845 version. We'll have to wait and see what Samsung do. 
So I'm really looking forward to seeing this chip in devices and comparing it to devices that got the Snapdragon 845. It's certainly going to be an exciting year in terms of processor performance and processor capabilities during this year and the handsets that we're going to see. I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so that you get a notification every time we drop a new video. And last but not least, please go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.